Our second task, which is the tutorial today, is about executable file format. I think this task will help you to understand a bit better how the compiler works and what's going on in your system when you create different object files and you try to combine them into an application. So without further ado, let's get started. So we know that operating systems basically provide a platform for the development of programs. And applications that we develop are somehow portable because you can compile their code for each platform using a compiler and then you typically can run it. However, on one platform you might have compiled different objects like libraries and object files, different compilation units. So the compiler wants to combine them into an application. And this requires that you have some kind of interface, how those different objects can talk to each other. So those object files therefore must include some kind of machine code and information that allows you to create this executable and allows you to, to link those objects together as we learned. An advantage when you, by the way, when you create object files in contrast to using source code is that you can link them rather efficiently and you can also distribute those kind of codes, um, this object code and object files, uh, allowing users to build an application, but you don't have to distribute the source code of it. So what is relevant as part of this tutorial is the so-called application binary interface or ABI. This is sim similar to an API, the application programming interface, in that extent that it is an interface too, but this one is really about binary objects. So what does an ABI cover? Well, it covers stuff like processor instruction set, which must be typically the same. The data type alignment must be compatible. Then you have conventions, how you need to call functions. You have conventions, how to call system calls, which are operating system functionality they want to use. You need to have a certain object file format to allow them to be used together. And you have a tool stack that allows you to interact with between those object files. Once you have all those in a compatible way, you can basically create a program by combining the different binary objects, object files together, even when you have compiled them with different compilers, which is quite neat. Right, and we know already from the lecture th that when you have an object file and you want to export certain symbols, like functions or global variables, and they shall be used by another program, somehow you have to use the so-called symbol table. So we, we find in this definition of an API a way how the symbol table is organized and that differs for the different files, uh, file system, for the different um, operating systems such as Linux and Windows. In Windows you have DLLs, for example. In Linux you have the shared object, SO files, and uh, in Linux, by the way, we have the so-called executable and linking format, which in short is ELF. There's also another format, which is quite cool for debugging. It's called DWARF. Okay, what we do as part of this tutorial, we try to understand a little bit what a compiler is doing, yeah, because that really helps us to make sure we get how programs, complex programs are compiled from different compilation units. So we take this little example code here and then we build and use different tools that are existing in Linux. So let me download now this code. Here we go. And I save it real quick. Nano example.c. So here we go. Here we have this source code. And before you continue, right, we continue, have a look what the source code does, what you have learned about compilers. Yeah, what do you see here? Think for a couple of moments and pause the video in the meantime. Okay. So welcome back. I hope you understand this little program and you had a, a go at this specific 
variables. So we have here this global variable. We have f1, a function. We have here another function, but this one is static declared. That means it's only visible as part of within the compilation unit here. And then we use those kind of symbols. Okay. Um, now what we shall do, we, we will use, we will compile this code first, like it says here. And then we use the tool nm, which tells us something about the op, what, what kind of symbols we have inside. So by using the dash c flag, we will create an object file called example.o. Now we can use nm example.o to examine it. So let's do this. And here you go. So what we see is the symbol table pretty much. And it says, well, you have here five symbols, f1, f2, gvar, main and printf. Now let's compa compare this with um, the source code. So let me go back to the source code. So what is gvar? Yeah, it's over here. So that's a global variable. Then we have main and it's marked as t. So t says it's part of the text segment. So it's basically code here. And then we have here f1 and f2. f1 and f2 are both functions, but they differ in that sense that this one is a function that shall be exported via the symbol table. It's visible because it's not declared static. So it's globally visible anywhere why this function f2 is static declared. That means it shall be used only within the compilation unit. And you see there's a difference between the uppercase t and the lowercase t, which then is honored by the compiler. Lastly, we say, um, what else do we say? Um, print f here, well, it's u, and u means it's pretty much a, u, a symbol that is used, but it's not declared as part of this object. And here on the left-hand side, we see pretty much the memory addresses that those objects have as part of this little compilation unit. Yeah, printf has not yet any memory address because we don't know anything about the code. Okay, so that looks all good. And I think you understand a little, can understand how this relates um, to our definitions of visibility. By the way, here is um, the description of the different, what the different characters mean. Yeah, and there are many more that I haven't shown you but this lowercase t means local text symbol, which is exactly what we just said, means that it's basically only locally accessible. And u is for undefined, okay. You don't have to remember all of them. It's just really for your reference. And I think you you get the, the key point. Okay. Now let's create an object file and using the, the debugging symbols. So all we need to do is add the dash g option here. And if I want, like, I can add G3, which adds more debugging symbols, doesn't matter. Now let's run NM again. And there is not any difference here, which is, uh -huh, which might be surprising at first but it really depends a little bit on which version of Linux you are and what kind of symbols will be included. Here I include more debugging options, more details about it. And you see here a lot of more information is basically added as additional symbols using the N flag as part of this NM tool. 